Cardano has just approved a new Oracle integration. And on the surface, it looks like just another technical update. But this one is different, and ignoring it could actually be a mistake if you're holding ADA. Because this wasn't a casual approval. It passed through Cardano's critical integrations framework, which already tells us that this matters more than most people actually realize. So the real question isn't what was approved. It's why this oracle, why now, and what actually changes for Cardano from this point forward. In the next few minutes, I'm going to show you what Cardano looked like before this approval, what's structurally different after, and why many ADA holders are completely overlooking the implications. By the end of this video, you're going to understand why this update quietly shifts how Cardano connects to real-world data, and why this one decision carries more weight than it first appears. If you've been holding ADA for any kind of length of time, you've probably felt this tension. On one hand, Cardano is methodical, it's careful, it's deliberate. But on the other hand, DeFi doesn't wait. Markets slow down, liquidity doesn't sit around politely. And for a very long time, Cardano lived in that uncomfortable gap between principles and practicality. So, when this Oracle integration was approved under the Critical Integrations Framework, it wasn't a random upgrade. It was actually a signal, a quiet one, but a very deliberate one nonetheless. So here's what really caught my attention right away. This wasn't pushed through as a community experiment. It wasn't framed as, let's see how it goes. It actually went through, you know, patented governance, if you will. That alone changes the weight of the decision. Because Pentad approvals, they aren't about trying things out. They're about committing to infrastructure that the chain is willing to stand behind. And that raises the obvious question that you're probably thinking then. Why now? And why Pyth? And why did Cardano choose this oracle instead of continuing to push forward with building its own path? Well, to answer that, you have to zoom out just a bit. Not to the price, not to the charts, but to how Cardano actually interacts with the outside world. For years, Cardano operated like a self-contained system. It was clean, it was precise, it was carefully designed. But also, it, if we're kind of really being truly honest about it, it's somewhat isolated, right? DeFi, decentralized finance, it doesn't really work in isolation. Bridges need real-time data. Stable coins need accurate pricing. Analytic tools need fast updates. And traders, whether you like it or not, they expect infrastructure that keeps up with reality. And that is where the kind of cracks started to show for Cardano. Cardano, it tried to build an, I guess, indigenous oracle solution that wasn't a failure in spirit. It was a failure in outcome. And that destination, or I should say actually distinction, mm, for years, Cardano operated like a self-contained system. It was clean, it was precise, and it was carefully designed. But also, if we are being honest, it was somewhat isolated. DeFi, decentralized finance, doesn't work in isolation. Bridges, they need real-time data. Stablecoins need accurate pricing. Analytics tools need fast updates. And traders, whether you like it or not, they expect infrastructure that keeps up with reality. And that is where the cracks started to show. Cardano tried to build an indigenous oracle solution. That wasn't a failure in spirit, it was a failure in outcomes. And that distinction actually matters. Because what Charles Hoskinson said during that live stream wasn't defensive, it was actually reflective. He openly acknowledged 
that the internal approach didn't really work as well as it should have. Now, that's not something that you hear often in this space, especially not from founders who have every incentive to double down instead of pivoting. So, when Cardano turned outwards and partnered with Pyth, it wasn't abandoning principles, it was actually choosing relevance. Now, Pyth Laser Oracle isn't just another data provider, and this is kind of where a lot of surface level commentary misses the point entirely. This isn't about price feeds for casual swaps. This is actually about ultra low latency data. Data that updates fast enough to support perpetuals. High frequency strategies, if you will, and systems where delayed information isn't just inconvenient, it's actually dangerous. So, if you've ever wondered why certain types of DeFi simply didn't exist on Cardano, this is a big part of that answer. Without fast, reliable, institutional grade data, developers are forced to design around the limitations. And when developers design around limitations, users feel it, liquidity tends to avoid it, and ecosystems stall. So, this approval is less about what Pyth is, and is actually more about what Cardano decided it needed to become. So here is the tension that really matters then. Cardano has always been strong at governance decisions, right? Research, formal processes, but DeFi competition isn't one in debates, is it? It's one in execution. And that's exactly what Pentad governance is meant to address. See, Pentad isn't a loose committee. It's a coordinated block. I input output, the Cardano Foundation, Emergo, the Midnight Foundation, Intersect. These are not just random voices. This is the core of Cardano agreeing on priorities. And the fact that the first major initiative under the critical integrations framework was an oracle, it tells you something. Because oracles are the bottleneck, right? Always have been. Fix the oracle layer and everything else becomes possible. Now that's the part that most people miss. This isn't about just adding one more feature. It's about removing friction across the entire DeFi stack. Think about bridges. Without reliable data, bridges are risk magnets. Let's think about stablecoins. Without accurate pricing, stability is just an illusion. Think about the analytics as well. Without fast updates, insights arrive too late to actually matter. And custodial infrastructure? Huh. Well, institutions, they don't tolerate uncertainty, right? They don't build on good enough. They need data that matches their standards. Now, Pyth, it brings that. Not hypothetically, not eventually. It already operates across more than a hundred different blockchains. It already aggregates data from a wide range of independent publishers. And that cross-chain maturity matters more than most people probably realize. Because Cardano isn't trying to be an island anymore. That line from Hoskinson, Cardano is not an island anymore, it wasn't rhetoric. It was a repositioning, right? It was an admission that long-term growth requires connectivity, not just philosophically, but technically too. Now, if you are wondering whether this is just another promise with a far-off timeline, here's where it gets more interesting. Deployment is actually planned for early 2026. So that's not necessarily tomorrow, is it? But it's also not you know, a distant, faraway land. And more importantly, this rollout will act as a test of Pentad governance in itself. Because approving something is one thing, right? But delivering it effectively is a whole nother ballgame. Now, this is where the stakes quietly rise. 
Because if Pentad can move this from approval to production smoothly, it can set a precedent. It can show that Cardano's new governance structure is not just talk. It can execute, and that changes how developers execute the chain. Now, developers, they don't just look at features, do they? Right? They look at reliability. They look at the timelines. They look at the decision-making clarity. And this integration puts all of that under a giant spotlight. Now, let me also just pause here for a second, because this is where some people get uncomfortable. Not because the news is bad, but because it actually challenges a familiar narrative. You see, for a long time, Cardano holders took pride in doing things differently. You know, slower, more careful, more academic. And you know what? There is value in that. But there's also a cost to it. And ignoring that cost, it doesn't make it disappear. Now, this Oracle approval is Cardano acknowledging that cost. And here's the reframe that really matters, because this isn't Cardano abandoning its identity. It's actually Cardano maturing into that identity. Now, decentralized governance through CIP-1694, I know, code words, I guess, it was never really about endless debate. It was all about coordinated action and accountability. Entad governance is what that looks like in practice. So instead of fragmented community efforts pulling in different directions, you actually get a treasury-backed initiatives, the fixed funding and delivery roadmaps. That's not centralization, that's just organization. And organization is exactly what decentralized finance infrastructure actually needs. And if you are holding ADA and you've ever wondered why certain applications have not arrived yet, well, this is the connective tissue. Oracles, they don't get headlines, right? But they do decide what is actually possible. Now, this might shock you, but I'm not a financial advisor and nothing in this video is financial advice. Cryptocurrencies are highly volatile and you could lose all of the money that you invest. You should always do your own research and consult a qualified professional. After all, your investments are entirely your responsibility and you should know that nothing is ever guaranteed when it comes to investing. Neither I, this channel, nor YouTube are liable for any losses. And this video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Okay, let's keep on going here because this is where the implications really start to stack. When Intersect confirmed that Pyth's laser oracle was approved due to its low latency institutional grade data across crypto, equities, foreign exchange, commodities and ETFs, that wasn't just marketing language. That was actually a statement of scope. Right, Cardano, it isn't just preparing for on-chain experimentation. It's actually preparing for interaction with broader financial systems. And whether you like the word institutional or not, that's where the liquidity lives. Now, this doesn't mean that Cardano suddenly becomes something that it isn't. It means that it becomes usable for more people in more contexts without compromising its actual core design. And that is why this approval matters more than maybe it first appears. Now, here's a quick kind of practical note for anyone navigating this wild space. One thing that I do, and something that I always kind of encourage, I is making sure that I'm signed up with, verified on, and familiar with multiple different crypto exchanges. This is not because you need to trade constantly, no, but it is because access matters. Exchanges, they can go down. Jurisdictions can change laws and rules, and liquidity can shift at any moment. So having plan A, plan B, and plan C, it isn't paranoia. It's actually just being prepared. Now that mindset, it actually applies to infrastructure too. Cardano choosing a mature Oracle provider is the same principle at the network level. 
And if you want to stay ahead of these kinds of updates without chasing headlines, there is a free educational Discord that's linked in the description below. It's where a lot of these conversations happen in real time without all of the noise. And in the description below, you'll find a link to our website where I list all of the exchanges that I do personally use. Here's a note on that though. On my website, I have affiliate links to those exchanges, which means if you do use those links to sign up to those exchanges, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does support the channel here. That's Transparency 101. Now, let's talk about what this means after the approval then. Because once PyThelaser's Oracle goes live, developers can build without workarounds. They can design for speed-sensitive strategies. They can support advanced DeFi products that simply weren't viable before. Now, that does not guarantee success because nothing does. But it removes a major excuse, doesn't it? And that alone can shift the narrative. Cardano before this approval was cautious but constrained. Cardano after this approval is cautious but connected. Now that's the transformation. And it extends into governance itself. Pentad governance isn't just approving projects. It's actually signaling priorities. It is saying this is what matters right now. And what matters now is infrastructure that works in the real world. If you are staking ADA, this is also where long-term alignment comes in. Because supporting state pools that are active, transparent, and invested in the ecosystem matters, in my opinion. Now, I personally support the Cardano Cheeky Crypto State Pool. Yes, that's ours. It's a shameless plug, I know. But it is because it aligns with the philosophy, the participation, and it's not just passive. Now, this isn't about short-term reactions either. Even Hoskinson made it rather clear. Market noise doesn't define success. The foundations do. And this Oracle integration is a foundation move. So when you step back and you ask why this particular Oracle under this particular framework at this particular moment, the answer, it does become clearer because Cardano reached a point where internal debate needed to give way to external connection. It's not because debate is bad, but because progress requires decisions. And that's exactly what happened here. Now, this is one of those updates that won't tend uh, to kind of trend on social media. It won't spark wild price speculation, but months from now, when certain applications exist on the Cardano network that didn't before, this is one of the reasons why. And that's why ignoring it would potentially be a mistake, right? Because the future of DeFi on Cardano isn't about hype cycles. It's actually about whether the chain can support what serious builders actually need. And you know what? This approval says yes. If you found this update useful, informative, then smash that like button and subscribe, or maybe watch the video that's queuing up on the screen right now. Until the next one, have a great day.